Toys Weekly, I've finally extracted the digit out of my arse and we're going to get on with some reviews. Yes, I'm King Grimlock, back once again. And today we're going to be taking a look at PCC Powercore Combiner, Heavy Tread and Ground Spike, the Wave 4 Scouts. Um, the first one is of course Air Hammer, the Jet. Um, this is the Autobot from the line. So let's take a closer look at what we've got. And what we've got is an exceptionally tidy tank mode. Yes, we have the normal Powercore Combiner tabs showing off and also you probably can't quite see but they are, they are just about visible down in there. We have a fully rotating turret which is nice and of sadly no moving treads but you know it is a scout class but he does have wheels and he will very painfully slide across the floor. Uh, the detailing on this is unbelievably good for a scout class sculpting on the barrel all the way across the back in panels that are just sort of stuck there to to, to fill in the gap um, and amazing detail down the side as well paint apps are lacking somewhat they've gone with the camo decal rather than I don't know filling in maybe silver on the tank treads um, or possibly picking out detail on the side camo detailing does work very well but when you're sort of the cross paint because they've gone with paint on certain areas Mold, um, and plastic on others show you an example on the front where this is side bit is um, you know khaki well they're both khaki but uh, the, the beige plastic green paint this is actually green paint both plastic and it's not too bad but there is a noticeable difference and also where the camo scheme doesn't move across for example onto this bit at the back here which is a movable part um, the camo doesn't carry across into it to blend it in which is a shame but you know it actually it still looks great it's still a nice looking tank mode on the flip side you can see a massive robot head underneath but it is very tidily done as well it's actually surprisingly well done for a scout figure um, there's his his mini -com port on the front, which heavy spike, uh, heavy tread, no ground spike, sits on the front. Now, <coughs> instruction manual puts him kind of that way up, with the claws underneath. Uh, there we are. Um, I prefer him that way up because then you've got the silver paint app on. The blades, it is of course preference, you can do it however you like. He also does have a mini com port on the front there if you wish to add, I don't know, a rocket launcher or something onto him. He is a very, very, very nice little tank mode, it has to be said. Yeah. Pleasantly surprised. I was looking forward to this guy, but yes, pleasantly surprised. Highly recommended in this mode, but let's take a look what he can do in his robot. And Heavy Tread presents an exceptionally tidy scout robot. Yes, it has its problems, that's without a shadow of a doubt, but it is exceptionally nice, well done for a scout, and it's just a step up in class from the previous Power Core combiners. Um, I really feel that this is the one that's done the business so far. A way four seems to be that step, a step up in quality. But before we take a look at the main man, let's have a look at his companion, who is not very good in robot mode. While he has great articulation in for the foot and leg, um, his arms are literally the blades, and he doesn't actually have any hands even sculpted per se. He does remind me though of the big mean axe uh, knife wielding dude out of 300 that cuts guys heads off. Um, which is always good, but maybe not for an Autobot. Um, and his head is actually that little stump in there. Not the grip on it, the stump. Um, mm, yeah. Um, there's sculpted detail on it, nothing to pick it out though, no paint apps. And I don't know, my, it's, it's, it's a good opportunity, badly done. <clears throat> Using this plastic really stands out. Um, instead of using completely pure clear plastic, it just seems a mistake. It seems like, oh, not a mistake, but you know, it seems cheap, like they've molded those bits in with the rest of him's, and that's all they could afford in clear blue plastic. He's not bad per se, but he's really not good. Um, his weaponry mode, if I can remember how to do it, um, is literally something like. <coughs> It's just something like that, which just clips into Heavy Tread's hand. Which, you know, isn't bad, again, personally, it's not bad, but the Minicon is definitely the weakest point of 
this figure. Um, none of the three modes, I mean the, the front blade mode's good, except for it doesn't really fit the right way up. And the armor mode, which we'll see when we do his combined mode, is a very different beast altogether. Still not great though, so let's get ground spike out of the way for the time being. And take a look at Heavy Tread, uh, who is an exceptionally tidy robot. There is no kibble per se, he has his turret kibble. Now this is the instruction manual's way of doing it. Personally, I prefer it in the configuration that's used for the uh, for the combined mode because this isn't it? it's very reminiscent of Brawl because of the cannon and because he's a tank. That's the only reason. That's why I much prefer to use the combined mode way of doing it. And it sort of brings him down. It gives him a weapon without having to use heavy tread, and it gives him I don't know it's like an aerial more than just a cannon back. It seems serves to fill him in more. It makes him a bit bulky. Well, he's already fairly bulky as Doki, but makes him a little bit more grounded. He just he just I don't know. It works better for me. Um, again, wonderfully sculpted detail in the hand. Great articulation all over. I love this sort of twist and swivel in there, um, and the joint in there. That's lovely. Um, he has waist articulation. Head is on a ball joint, so it can move just about anywhere. Um, knee. And these panels can move in and out depending on how you like the design. Um, I don't like the feet on this guy. He has literally just these little toes there. Um, so while in, well integrated, it would be nice maybe a little flap on the back. Of course, that's where the, the power core slots come out of. So there is no real way to do it. He is fairly stable anyway, so you haven't got to worry about it too much. Um, let's take another look around him, shall we? Say, so, very nicely done. Good detailing all over. Some nice sculpted detail in on the side. Bits that you would only see in the in the robot mode um, and when it's sort of like he, he, you've got three modes I can imagine them thinking well we could leave those sorts of bits out but they don't and it's very well done on Hasbro's part for that uh, yeah, there we go he's just nicely done all round it's it's one of those figures that is not going to blow you away but as a scout, scout class he is actually really good he doesn't stand up to the likes of I don't know the new wind charger but he is a very good power core combiner but what do power core combiners do yes that's right they combine. And the combine mode, I have to say, is the first ultimately successful combine mode that I've actually reviewed. This guy looks astonishing. Now, I would normally pair them up with just random drones, but I've done him with the Combaticons, because this is kind of the guy that he's been promoted with. It's a shame that he's an Autobot and the Combaticons are quite clearly Decepticons, because there are do have some Decepticon logos on them, um, but he does look great with this sort of army patrol look to him. Um, and the actual body itself is such a lovely uniform piece, um, and it's just got so much bulk to it in the right areas. He has a massive chest, the thighs fit well into the actual legs, and the shoulders have got a decent size and decent width to them to make him look like this is supposed to be his mode. You know, he looks great. I mean, he looks absolutely stunning in this mode, it has to be said. With this, these guys, I mean, I'm tempted to pick up another set of drones just so I can actually put this guy in them, obviously painting over things like that Decepticon logo on the back. Because he is tidy, he is nice, there is no kibble, he's not loose or weak in any way, in the same way that the um, that a lot of the power core combiner commanders are because the way all the panels come back together from the rope mode and sort of feeling a sort of tank mode look or build to him it's all very sturdy it's all very safe and the head sculpt is sensational i'm not sure how well the camera will pick it up if i move my hand out of the way it'll probably help but it looks great and he still looks like an autobot despite the fact that he is quite clearly a decepticon and his body armor little heavy uh, ground spike is, you know, I've given it a half time to so far. Even he in this mode, get him in the right place, so stand up. Power core combiners will always have the standing problem, I feel. Even he adds to this mode, even he adds a look to it. You know, it adds something to it. It's not great. I still prefer him without, unfortunately. But this looks fantastic. And I really hope that they do a set using um, Ground Spike. or oh, Heavy Tread. Sorry, not Ground Spike. Using Heavy Tread and uh, some more combat-based vehicles like these guys. And do them all in a uniform colour, much the way that they've done the Dinobots. Because it just brings the whole thing together. This feels like a single unit. This feels right. This feels like it should 
all blend together into one. You can believe this is a one robot figure. Uh, it's I don't know. It's uh, kind of going against the grain actually. Um, with much of what I've said about power core combiners, I've grown a love for them. But this guy's really turned my head as to how far the design process has obviously come since those first waves came out. This guy is a massive, massive step forward from the Wave 1 figures, um, and even from the Wave 2 figures. This guy is just immensely better. Um, so, anyway, uh, this has been Power Core Combiner Heavy Tread and Ground Spike. I've been your host, King Grimlock, and we will see you next time.